Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. Sorry, this is episode 630, 633. Oh, yes. 633 Squadron. Sorry, old movie. Flashback. If you haven't seen 633 Squadron, check it out. It's probably on Netflix. It's an old black and white movie. Probably actually maybe some old classic movie channel. Anyway, totally distracted. This is episode number 633. 633. And the title today is your, <laughs> is your, the cure for a bad relationship is not your next one or is not the next one. Should have seen your next one. I may play with that. Before I jump into the top pick, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate, cha passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what led to these talks I started over two years ago called uh, Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today, we're at episode number 633. I've done a few of these. And the topic again is your, the cure for a bad relationship is not your next one. Let's unpack this, shall we? Um, if you're part of the human population, you've probably experienced what I'm about to talk about. So there's a possibility, a very slim chance that maybe you never experienced this, but if you're like anybody else I know, including myself, you've been through something like this. A relationship ends badly. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Basically, you go through a relationship breakup that really is painful. And I'm being funny and facetious, but I also want to keep it light because for some of you might be going to the bits of despair and I want you going there. I want you to really get clear what I'm talking about because this could change your relationship future. Bad relationship ends, no more sound effects. And you feel wounded, hurt, upset, distressed. For most people, the tendency is to go out and go dating again. Maybe, and especially nowadays with the smartphone apps, it's like get your phone out, go to Tinder or some other app, find somebody you like, and go swipe right and get into another relationship. My suggestion, my recommendation, my cautionary tale or reminder is that's the last thing you want to do if you've had a bad breakup. To pile somebody else on top of the old one, which is a really bad image, is a negative choice, a limiting choice, a failed choice. Hi, BJ, nice to see you my broadcast. Um, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a Facebook Live first, hence I'm talking to people you can't see. So next time, watch me on Facebook Live. I'll give you the links at the back end, how to find me and watch me. So the idea that you can paste over the old bad relationship with a new happy relationship is a false image. It's a delusional experience. It's an impossibility. No, I was going to go, well, all right. I was going to say, unless, of course, it's the person you date as a therapist, but then you're not in a relationship. You're in a codependent counseling relationship. It's a whole different paradigm. My teaching point here is that if you are in a new relationship because of the last one was bad, there's no guarantees the new one's going to fix what happened before because you are still carrying around the wounds from the past relationship, and you're then making it the other person's job in the new relationship to fix it for you. That's not the one thing you want to do. The reality is if you're carrying around pain, suffering, wound from your past relationship, the last person you should have fix it is the other person, the new person. The truth is you want to work on it yourself, resolve it yourself, and heal your past wounds so you can be free to love fully, as I've always teach, and as I teach on my broadcasts. Secondly, another piece I want to throw on the table is when you come out of a bad relationship, wounded experience, painful, upset relationship, whatever you want to call it, and you look back at that relationship. For again, I'm, I'm using general terms here because it is the majority of cases. If you are somebody who is willing to look back at your past relationship, you will realize, because most people go through this, that your past relationship will be perhaps repetitious of past experiences. And I don't mean like the same things were said, but you may notice a common thread. Well, thank you, PJ. I'm live on Savvy Sisterhood. I'm, I, I appreciate being in that group. I have no idea who the group is, but thank you for that. I like being in front of sharing this with women because a lot of women go through this especially men do too but women are more open to hearing this so hopefully they will get benefit from this too so ladies if you're watching thank you for being here thanks for watching i do appreciate and welcome your comments and involvement in the broadcast so continuing so two things and just to recap quickly going into a new relationship without healing your wounds suffering heartbreak upset from the past relationship is doing you and them a disservice because you may in fact be lumping your upsets and wounds onto the next person. In fact, it's going to happen because this is what happens, by the way. After you've been wounded, hurt, or suffering from a bad breakup, you start to protect your heart automatically. It's a human condition. You'll protect your heart, 
close it up and you'll actually start to suppress and repress the love inside of you to protect yourself. You go into a new relationship where the intimacy starts to grow, hopefully, and that person you're with starts to um, invite and tickle open your heart, so to speak. And when they open, when your heart does start to open, all of the pain and wounding that's inside of it, it's got to go somewhere, it's going to come out. And that person you're now in love with has to face your demons, your wounds, your hurts, your upsets from your past relationship, and that isn't fun. If you really like the person you're going to be with, that's the last thing you want to do is dump all the stuff on them. The best thing you can do is actually resolve that before you meet them, before you even find them, is resolve the stuff on your time, on your own. Now, before I get to the solution to that, let me go back to one other thing. I mentioned just earlier about how, look back at your, this past relationship, we had a breakup, painful, upset, wounding, ending that didn't work out well. It is likely if you look back further, that's why I see a hummingbird on the balcony just flew away. That was nice. Have a, have a pummy bird show up. I don't, know if that, I don't know if that'll help or anything. Anyway, <laughs> distraction, stay focused. No more squirrels. In the review of your past relationship, if you look back at previous relationships before that, one, two, three, four, five relationships before, excuse the plane going overhead, so I hope you don't hear it too much on the mic, you will notice that there's a commonality, a similarity, a perhaps repetition of certain experiences, results, feelings from past relationships. A for instance, okay, yeah, I was looking, well, I was going to give an example, I, but I thought, no, let me expose myself, my own examples. In my younger days, many, many years ago, in my early dating life, roughly from like, I was a late bloomer, so 17, 18, up to about 24, 25, I had a pattern that I now look back and see clearly. And it sounds simple, but this is an example so you know for yourself. But I noticed there was a common thread in all my relationships. And something which is short term, I didn't last very long because of this reason. I had a rule that, and this wasn't a rule I knew about consciously, it was running automatically, and I'll get to that in a moment too. That in each relationship, love was something that was safe, it was wonderful, it was joyful, but it never involved any arguments. Never involved in the upsets and never involved in never involved in any discord. So in each relationship, when that happened, as in that argument, that upset, the discord, my programming was that I was no longer in love, therefore I should leave, which I did every single time. Thankfully I learned that was not a requirement, and also learned what was going on. Now in your life, perhaps you have something similar. Maybe you're not the same experience, but maybe it was one where you've noticed your relationships were maybe in the past had a repetition of where there was abuse showing up, physical, mental, emotional abuse. Or perhaps there was an experience of abandonment going on where the person that was never there and it happened every time you were in a relationship or most of the times you were in a relationship. Or perhaps even more so, you were in a place where there was an addictive pattern or workaholism or other sorts of um, codependency that were insufferable and actually ruined your relationship experience. And maybe you noticed that happened in the one before, the one before that, the one before that. Here's the magic secret about the whole thing. If you've noticed there is a pattern that goes through several relationships, the end of that pattern, as in where it started, or should say the beginning of that pattern, where it started, is when you're about five years old. I'm letting this sink in for a second before I say anything more. As human beings, we learn how to do life as young children by modeling what we learn from the adults. If you notice kids, they do this especially young children, they'll mimic what their parents do. If you're, if you're a young child, if you had a young child, you know, it's a lot of times when they're very young, three, four, five, six, seven years old, they will learn by doing what you do, which can be dangerous, which is why you've got to warn them, like, you know, don't pick up hot water or don't do, don't, you know, don't, you know, carefully open the door, you don't want to jam your fingers in the door. These are the things that we try to learn and copy clumsily because we're not that old. And so we tend to learn everything that way. Before we're really vocal and articulate to understand things and, and to actually have dialogue, we think that must be, we, we look at adults and think that must be the way, like, way life is. And in particular, we tend to imprint patterns of relating from those adults, parents, and other adults around us into our system without a second thought. Because it isn't a second thought, it's a program going in. And I mentioned in another talk about how, you know, our parents, we were programmed by our parents, not by coding on a computer, but by modeling an example. So our ways of being around everything in life, including money, spirituality, relationship, health, 
fitness, all these things, in our early imprinting comes from our parents. It's only as an adult we start changing that. But for most people, the one thing they don't change is their relationship programming. And I'm talking about relationship programming being the way you do things by automatic pilot. You may be aware, and it may, you don't want to talk about this publicly, you don't have to share it here, but you may think about it in your own life, in past relationships where certain things you did without even thinking about it. Some good, some bad. And it's that understanding that will start to bring awareness to the fact that automatic pilot, one, doesn't have to be automatic, and two, can be changed. And the reality of this understanding, thank you. Oh, you're supposed to be in Periscope back in the day. Yeah, I, I don't do Periscope anymore. I, I, it was a, it was a, it was the Wild West. Hang on, I'm sure I get my thoughts straight. Okay, I'm going back. I'm going to make sure I get back to the thought I was on. Which I'm distracted by this. So thanks, PJ. Yes, yeah, I did tons of Periscope broadcasts, but it was the Wild West when Facebook Live got decent, which it took a while. I jumped on there and have been going ever since. That's why 633 broadcasts. So back on track. Thanks for that, PJ. <laughs> Our programming. Our belief systems, our rules about relationship didn't come from studying books for most of us. They came from our parents. And what they did modeled how we should be. Now, in my exa experience and my example I shared earlier, I was raised in a family where we didn't argue much. Yeah, it was the Wild West, in DPJ. Um, in that early programming, the early life, for me, I was around my parents and they never argued in front of the kids. Now, I'm saying it that way because I don't know if they didn't argue behind us where we weren't seeing it. But my experience growing up was we didn't argue. A lot of love, caring in our reserved, stoic English upbringing. But it was still without argument. So my programming for my dating life, as I mentioned, from 17, 18 to early mid-20s, there was a piece missing in relationship. Meaning I didn't understand that if you have an argument, you could still be in love. Because my programming was love didn't include arguments. That's the way I was raised. Now, it sounds wonderful, but it, was, it really messed up my love life. And I had no idea about makeup, sex, or any of the good stuff that came from getting past the arguments. Because the reality is when you get past that sort of challenge, you can go deeper. And I didn't go deeper in my old relationships. That was another price I paid. So it doesn't matter how good your, relationship, your parents' relationship was and how good your upbringing was, you will take patterns that, will make, that may interfere with your adult relationships. So again, two things. Not dragging yourself in the next relationship, but also looking back at what you started with so you can change the wiring, change the programming, and rewrite the code in yourself, so to speak. It's funny because you used to be a computer programmer, so I guess that languaging fits in this context. By understanding that what you are doing is not something you have to do, that what you're doing is a default, a program that you've been running since you were five years old or six years old without knowing it, means that you can change your 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 trajectory, your destination, your journey, your, your, your ultimate goal of relationship and love. This is the core of my work. And it's what, for me, drives my mission to help people attract healthy relationships because they start by healing the relationship with themselves, healing their wiring and programming from their childhood so they can love from a clean, whole, healthy, and joyful place. Because that's the limit, that's the minimum of what you deserve. So in my work and my coaching, this is my service to my clients because I know now, and having learned the lessons, that there's so much more to relationship than we think because what we look at our parents, that's not the, the, the rules we have to live by. In my talk yesterday, I talked to you briefly yesterday, I was at the Conscious Life Expo, and I shared about how what they tell us isn't what we have to live by. This is on a similar vein. is what we were told by our parents, not necessarily, I mean, I mentioned about being programmed, but also what we were told by our parents. If they, if they said to you, and I said this yesterday, so this is a recap in a way, that maybe they thought that, maybe they said to you things that were flippant or negative or, de or derogatory, like saying you're not smart enough or you're not cute enough or you're, you, have to, you have to put up with what you've got or something like that. None of that stuff is true. That's their words, not your life. So this is in the same little vein, only deeper is the programming below the surface that we took in without realizing it. So as much as you may have denied or countermanded their conscious language they used at you or the sorry the, the unconscious language they used at you by talking to you negatively there's a whole layer below that which is the subconscious programming that we take on as kids without knowing it it's automatic if you want help with that that's my job and I will help you with reprogramming rewiring that so you can be free to love the way you truly want desire and deserve I'll put links in the comments for 
a discovery session with me. That's for the ladies particularly. Um, if you're a guy and you want to find out, you can reach through that. You can put a note in the comments of the link. Um, that's a discovery session, by the way. Actually, that's, that's all I'm going to put in there. I've got other, I've got other programs and products I, I share and sell, including my book, but I want to put in there just that link. So if you're looking for help and you want to really get this wiring reframed and change the way you attract relationships, you get better choices in the future, and you don't have to keep going on swipe, delete, swipe, delete, swipe, delete, Sign up, for, sign up for a discovery session. I'll help you with that. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I talk about relationships and love a lot. This is number 633. I've got plenty of content. And I'll let you know where you can find them. This is my Facebook Live I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but this weekend, because of so much, so much going on, I've been all over the place. That's why today's is at 4 p.m. Yesterday's was at uh, 7 p.m., I think it was, 6 p.m. On Friday, it was a different time entirely because I was at the Conscious Life Expo. So I'm doing this now because actually I'm heading out shortly to go to an um, Oscar party. You know, food, TV, gambling, betting, stuff like that, fun stuff. Anyway, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, usually it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which it will be tomorrow. Yes, the rest of the week will be normal time, I believe, 5 p.m. Pacific time. On my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I save them all to my business page as well as other places, but my business page where you find them most easily because that's pretty much the only thing on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. You can watch all the replays there. YouTube is where I put these as well, in case you're watching on YouTube wondering what am I talking about. <laughs> on YouTube, my, my um, channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And thank you, PJ. I plan to enjoy. Um, and the so again, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is messages from the masculine, where all of these are listed from newest to oldest. You can find them all there. Finally, I do have a podcast with the audio versions of my first earlier broadcast. My first earlier, yeah, that one, which is on iTunes, and it's messages from the masculine. Please subscribe to that, and uh, you can download the audios and listen to them on your phone, in the car, when you're driving around, whatever you want to do. This is my mission, my purpose, and if you're stuck in your love life and you want to fix it. I can help. And doing it yourself can work, but I can do it faster because I'm another person. And being, being a reflector and being a support, I can see more clearly than perhaps you can see yourself. That's my promise. That's my service. That's my work. And if you want to go deep, let's talk. Again, the link will be in the comments so you can find out how to work with me and we can talk. And uh, that's about it. Again, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time is the normal time. Going forward, it will be for a while. I've got no other events coming up for the next few days. <laughs> Life is interesting. And again, if you have questions or comments about this particular talk, please put them in the comments below and I'll share, respond to them after I sign off. Thanks for being with me as always. And please share it with anybody you think should, get, should watch this because they may get value. If you want to share it with any groups like PJ did, I appreciate that. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow for another talk. That'll be 6.34. I'll see what comes up then. Thanks for being with me and I hope this has been of help to you. Take care. Bye.